Snake in the Temple In Oshu, Iwate, there is a temple by the name of Senshoji. The temple is located on a mountain, and a giant snake has lived on the second floor of the temple for many long years. It does not harm people, but is said to be roughly 9 meters long. In recent years, another snake of roughly 4 or 5 meters is also said to have taken up residence. The temple residents call this one the Young Snake. The story goes that a young boy who used to live at the temple was quite misbehaved. Among his various misdeeds were crimes such as stealing, and the head priest, who was tired of his ways, ordered the nearby peasants to secretly kill him. Then, it was said, the spirit of that boy became a snake. That snake apparently doesn't just live in the temple, but sometimes goes down to haunt the descendants of those peasants as well. When the thatching is replaced on the temple roof, it must be done only one half at a time. If they change it all at once, the snakes will appear and frighten everyone. And when it's replaced, it's said they find a lot of snake and sparrow droppings in the roof too. Night of the Dancing Meat Around the third year of Kyoka, a carpenter by the name of Konokichi worked in Itayanagi village. One night, he was chatting with colleagues when they realized it was late and everyone was sober and hungry. They decided to have a few more drinks before bed, and while they had more sake on hand, they didn't have any snacks. As they discussed what to do, one of them suggested they cook a chicken. Everyone was in agreement, so they went out to the hen house, caught one, and then cooked it. The meat was cooked to perfection, but as they were about to start drinking, suddenly they heard one of the chickens outside start crying. The meat in the pot then jumped up and scattered all around the room. Everyone froze in fright and instantly sobered up. Their hair stood on end and not a single one of them wanted to eat the chicken anymore. They gathered the pieces and then took them to the bank out back to dispose of them. Seeing such tenacity firsthand, I was so frightened that I haven't eaten chicken nor even eggs since," said Konokichi. There was a similar yet not identical incident in the second year of Kae. Three theatre actors stayed in Kanita village and were cooking small fish at an inn. Once one side was well done, they turned the fish over to cook the other side, but then the six fish on skewers started to jump around and then fell into the ashes below. The actors were so surprised and creeped out that they picked the fish up and put them back into the water outside, where they then swam away. Mikunia Sazayamon was there at the time and said he saw the whole thing with his own two eyes. The Dead Woman of Kutsu in the domain of Naito Notokami, Lord of Iwaki and Oshu, there was a village by the name of Kutsu. Tatsu, wife of the peasant Shousaburo, was a merciless woman with a wicked heart. Whenever she grew angry, her eyes would squint and her mouth open wide. With her hair sitting high in a bun, she looked just like a demon woman. She had cursed more than 20 people to their deaths. But not even a woman as fierce and vicious as Tatsu could escape her fate, and she died at age 37. In her final days, her face took on a terrifying countenance, and she died in a fit of madness, spouting about all the crimes she committed throughout her life. Tatsu's corpse was sent to Zenshoji, her family temple in Kutsu. But the chief priest of Zenshoji had gone to Kyoto for training, and in his absence, Fukushoji Temple in Hashirikuma Village, part of the Pure Land sect, was taking care of matters related to the deceased. As the monk from Fukushoji attempted to shave the head of the deceased, he placed the razor on her forehead and began chanting. But suddenly, the deceased raised her hands to her head to keep him from it. Surprised, the monk put the razor down and removed the woman's hands from her head. Then, he placed the razor on her forehead again, but this continued over and over. 
Before long, the deceased woman's skin began to change colour. Her mouth split wide open, and two points like horns grew out of her head. In great shock, the monk called the woman's family. Something horrendous may occur during this woman's burial. Please take care, he warned them. Her coffin was nailed shut even more tightly than usual, and it was then bound by thick rope from a ship, just in case. That night, they took the woman's coffin to a mountain behind Kutsu village, and the clear sky suddenly grew cloudy and rainy. Strong winds blew, thunder rumbled in the sky, and lightning flashed bright behind the dark clouds shrouding the coffin. Those in attendance were terrified, and they discarded the coffin at the foot of the mountain and ran home. When they returned at dawn, the coffin had been shattered and the deceased was nowhere to be seen. This is all said to have happened around 8pm on the night of February 5th in the fourth year of Gembun. Wolves A wealthy man from Edo travelled all the way to see Matsushima, one of the most famous sites in Oshu, but he got lost in the mountains on the way there. As he was walking, he came across a shabby, dilapidated house deep in the valley. Let's ask them for directions, he thought, and inside he found an elderly couple with a beautiful daughter about 20 years old. The young woman stood by the elderly woman's side as she worked at a loom. The traveller fell in love with the young woman at first sight. As he was resting, he took a closer look at her, and she was such a natural beauty that he turned to the elderly woman and said, I'm sorry this is so abrupt, but why don't you give your daughter to me instead of living such a poor man's life out here in the mountains? Then I will take you all back to Edo with me, and you can live out the rest of your lives in peace. We are already terribly old, the man replied, and we might pass away tomorrow or even the next day. We want to see our final days out here in the mountains, but we also want our only daughter to live a good life. If you will take her, then we will give her to you. The traveller was overjoyed and gave the elderly couple a large sum of money. He no longer cared whether he saw Matsushima or not, and he quickly rushed back to Edo with his new wife. Three years passed. It has been three years since I last saw my parents, the man's wife said. Since I have not sent them news, they must think I'm a terrible daughter and hate me. I'd like to return to Oshu just once to see them again. The man was rich and still wished to see Matsushima, so he agreed to his wife's request and they set out with several companions. When they finally arrived at the woman's parents' house, they found it abandoned and falling apart. The pillars had broken, the walls were collapsing, and it was clear nobody had lived there for quite some time. Looking even closer, they discovered the bodies of two large wolves by the house that nature and time had badly decayed. They had long been dead, and there was nothing left of them but bones. My parents, the woman cried upon seeing the skeletons. They have already been killed by people. Oh, what a terrible day this is. Her body seemed to tremble, but then she suddenly transformed into a large wolf and howled. She leapt at her husband, and in his surprise, he drew his sword to defend himself, but it was too late. The wolf, his wife, ate him. Upon seeing this, their companions were so terrified that they fled without looking back.